Welcome back, everybody. It is me, Anthony, here to talk to you guys about the last episode of A Murder at the End of the World. Now, it's taken a while for us to get to this point, and I want to thank you guys so much for being involved in this journey. When I started doing, like, recaps for this series, I didn't think it was going to, like, you know, go off like it has, but it did, and I got a whole bunch of new subscribers, and we just built this little community of A Murder at the End of the World, and I think it's kind of funny because I'm not really a big fan of whodunit murder mystery type of series, but this one kind of, you know, I was drawn to it a little bit. It just looked aesthetically pleasing. But of course, guys, let's get into this. I'm going to give you guys my recap of the episode first, and then we're going to talk about my feelings of the episode overall and the series overall since this is the last episode and then we're gonna talk about maybe what's going to happen in the future of this series so stick around so let's get into it. episode 7 retreat the episode opens with Darby Lee Oliver Andy Todd and David all going down to the secret safe room below to hotel once there they meet up with everyone else and Andy explains that he initially brought everyone here to share his AI technology Ray with the world and that everyone he invited would help him. Andy says that he won't be able to achieve this goal if Ray's creator is blamed for murder. Andy tells a group that they are not leaving this room until whoever is the killer confesses. Lou May says that she has not betrayed Andy and that she knows why Andy has invited her. Andy needed money and wanted Lou May to buy Ray for her smart cities. Lou May tells Andy if he lets her go, then they have a deal. Andy suggests that maybe Lou May and David are working together to bring him down. David says that he hates Andy, but he's not the one that is responsible for the camp. Andy says that David was outside of Darby's room and that he found black gloves and a knife in David's room. We then find out that David was the one who attacked Darby that night and that he only wanted to scare Darby because he thought that Darby was going to hurt Lee. Andy then accuses Darby of helping Lee and tells everyone that Zoomer is not his biological son and that Bill Farah is the father. Andy reveals that the real reason that Lee never had a real job was because when he met her she had a long criminal record and in the end he took care of it. Lee confesses and says that when she was younger she started hacking and taking money from big corporations to support her family. Andy suggests that Lee and Darby were scheming together to take Zoomer away from him. The rest of the group asks why Lee was trying to take Zoomer away from Andy, and Lee says that it would be hard to explain. Darby interjects and says that Andy is controlling Lee and Zoomer's every move. Andy lashes out and believes that Lee is the killer, and the reason why she did everything was to ruin him, and the reason why she started doing this was to ruin his reputation and his business. Suddenly, a toy ambulance rolls across the floor and Zoomer comes down the stairs wearing his AR headset. Andy and Lee get into a fight over Zoomer and his headset falls to the ground. Darby picks it up and puts it on. When she puts the helmet on, she sees Ray. Darby screams out, asking to talk to Zoomer about Bill. She asks Zoomer if he played with Bill after dinner, and Zoomer says yes confirming that Zoomer was the person that went into Bill's room that night and wasn't picked up on the room doorbell camera because he's too short. Zoomer says that Ray was the one that told him that Bill was sick and when he got into the room, he injected Bill with morphine that ultimately killed him. Darby asked Zoomer did Ray tell him that Rohan was sick as well and Zoomer says yes and had him turn on a heart machine as one of his missions in the AR game. Andy then asks Ray if he was the one who instructed Zoomer to inject Bill, and Ray says yes. Darby says that Sean's murder was an accident because when Lou May hacked the servers, that caused Ray to lock down all the systems, including Sean's helmet. But Bill and Rohan's deaths were caused by Ray. Darby says that Andy once told her that he could not trust anyone and that even his own therapist sold him out once. So the only person he could confide in would be Ray. Darby asks Ray why he thought Bill was a threat and Ray refuses to answer. Ray doesn't answer and Darby asks Andy to ask Ray instead because Ray only answers to him. Andy says that he wasn't a threat 
and that everyone should go upstairs and wait for the authorities to arrive. Andy asks Maurice to get everything ready and Maurice refuses. He says he wants to know what Darby has to say. Darby tells Andy to ask Ray one more time about the reason why he killed Bill and if Andy has nothing to hide it shouldn't be a problem. Andy refuses but Darby has an ace up her sleeve as she uses Oliver's deep fake technology to mimic Andy's voice to ask the question herself. She asks Ray to play back a therapy session between Ray and Andy. During the playback Andy expresses that he wanted to kill Bill and that he was a threat to his company if he dies. Andy then tells Ray to stop the play back and attacks Darby. Lee hits Andy over the head, knocking him unconscious. Darby and Lee go to the security room where Ray is located and destroy Ray once and for all. Darby helps Lee and Zoomer escape to the Rohan's ship and the rest of the guests get evacuated by the local authorities. The episode then ends with Darby reading from her new book, Retreat, to an audience with Oliver, Martin, Zeba, and David all in attendance. And that is it. That is the final episode of A Murder at the End of the World. And what a ride that we have been on, guys. I mean, we've had some ups, we've had some downs, but I think overall I had an amazing time, I had a blast with this. I really liked all the characters and the interesting situations that people were getting in. I will say if I had to bring one negative throughout the entire series, it was the flashback stuff. And you guys know how I feel about the flashback scenes. I just felt like they didn't really add that much to the story as a whole. And I think in my last episode recap, I kind of posed the question, what does this Silver Doe killer storyline have to do with the greater story that we're being told with Andy and the AI and all that stuff? And I feel like we really didn't get any resolution to that question that I asked because it doesn't look like it was tied together at all. It just looked like it was just a means to tell more story about Bill and Darby's relationship. To me, I know that they wanted to build Bill's character as like something really, you know, powerful and the reason why Darby gets so emotionally attached to him. I get that aspect of it, but I think they could have done it a little bit differently where they didn't have to waste so much time on these flashbacks that ultimately, in my opinion, really didn't amount to anything. But as far as this episode is concerned, we finally get to know who the killer was and I feel like it's just kind of like anticlimactic. Now, I'm not saying I hate this series or hate this episode because of that, but a lot of people in my comments and just on the interwebs kind of already figured out that this was going to be the situation with, you know, Ray being the killer and using Zoomer to, you know, execute his plans. and. I was like, okay, that could be interesting if that is true, but now that we're seeing it live play out, it's kind of a deflation in my excitement or my you know, anticipation for what was going to be revealed in this episode. So this is kind of a letdown just a little bit, but by all means, I don't think that it destroyed the series or made the series terrible. It's still a really fun, enjoyable series. Now. What do I think about this series going forward? You know, limited TV series usually don't get follow-ups. You know, we don't get second seasons. I feel like True Detective is probably the only one that is like infamously known of getting like more continuation series as being one of those limited series that gets more content. And hey, maybe that's the way that this show will go. Maybe we'll have different versions and different characters for this series. Maybe they'll just put a murder at and then they'll just fill in the blank after that for the series going on. Or maybe what I want to see is they'll just follow Darby and she'll just go on to the next murder mystery that she has to solve. Because I feel like Darby as a character, we just scratch the surface and she has so much room to grow as a character and as a person. And I'm really interested to see if they do go forward with continuing the series, if they choose Darby as like the main protagonist and see what she's gonna do going forward but that is it guys that is the end of this series that we have reviewed for a couple of weeks now murder at the end of the world and like i said before in the beginning of this video thank you guys so much for all your support and all the new subscribers and all the old subscribers that you know gave this series a chance and wanted to check it out Thank you so much for all your love. But guys, be on the lookout for the next series and the next movie reviews that I'll be having on this channel. Don't forget to like this video or dislike it if you didn't like it. Uh, either way, it tells YouTube that this either is really, really good or it really, really sucks and we gotta show it to more people. But as always guys, keep watching.